where the Lord says, and I myself will be a wall of fire around it, declares the Lord, and I will be its glory within. Welcome to Faith City Outreach. This is Marina Maria with today's special guest, Pastor Robert Clancy from Narrow Path Ministries International in Perth, Western Australia. Thank you very much for being here today, Pastor Robert. I'm looking forward to talking to you about spiritual warfare today because it is such an important topic that every Christian should be knowledgeable and proactive about. Amen. Thank you very much for having me uh, on the show, sister. It's a privilege to be here today. You're very welcome, and it's an honor to have you. I'm going to just go right ahead and ask you the first question. How does the Bible define spiritual warfare? Well, according to the Bible, if we go to the book, uh, the first book of John, chapter 3, verse 8, it says, the reason the Son of God was made manifest or visible was to destroy, loosen, and dissolve the works of the devil. So, you know, people may say, well, Jesus came to bring peace. Yes, he came to bring peace. Other people may say he came to save mankind, which is true. He came to do those things. But John the Revelator, he had this revelation where he saw that the Holy Spirit showed him the purpose of the Son of God being made manifest was to destroy the works of Satan. Now, when we go to the Ephesians 6, verse 12, you've got to understand that the Apostle Paul was under house arrest. Now, according to Roman custom, when someone was under house arrest, they had to be chained to a Roman guard. So as he is finishing, uh, you know, the letter to the Ephesians in chapter 6, he starts to get a revelation on the spiritual battle that he was fighting. So he looked at the Roman soldier that he was chained to and started to depict the full armor of God that we see. And according to verse 12, it says, for our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the world powers of this darkness age, against the spiritual forces in evil places, born again Christians. We are automatically enlisted into the army of God. Now, within this battle, the casualties of this battle are men, women, boys and girls. And in this war, there is no ceasefire like in a normal natural war. There's no truce. There's no timeouts. There's no prisoners. There's no quarter time or half time. So we've got to understand that in Ephesians 6, you know, the Apostle Paul is is revealing to us that there is there is an invisible war going on and the physical world is directly connected to the wrestling match being waged in the invisible spiritual realm so the effects of the war going on in the unseen world reveal themselves in our strained and our damaged relationships as an example our emotional instability our mental fatigue our physical exhaustion and many other areas of our life. So many of us may feel pinned down by anger, unforgiveness, pride, compassion, insecurity, or fears, and the list goes on. But the overarching thing is that God has told us, according to 1 Peter 5, 8, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. So we've got to understand that there is an invisible spiritual battle that as Christians we are involved in. And those that don't get involved, they are already automatically casualties of that war. My next question is, is going to be, what are the biggest misunderstandings Christians have about spiritual warfare? And I think you just answered it, answered it. And this is related to the invisible world. I think that we don't want to believe in it or we're scared about it. Yes. What do you think? Well, or we I, fear I, it. Yeah, we, we, many people fear it, but I think it comes back to the scripture that says, My people perish through lack of knowledge. And what I tend to say that is that your pastor 
may have an understanding of spiritual warfare. But if he is not teaching about it, then the people themselves can become ignorant to what the Bible truly says about this battle. Now, let's look at this. Matthew 16, 19 says, I will give you the keys of authority of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on this earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loosen on this earth shall be loosened in heaven. So just when we look at that scripture uh, alone, we can see that authority is being given unto the believer. Mm-hmm. Now, looking at the, the structure of a sentence, in this sentence, we see that there is a semicolon used up to the point that he's given us the keys of authority. A semicolon is used to break up a, str- uh, a sentence so that it continues to flow. So an actual fact here, when it says uh, giving you the keys of the kingdom, uh, that the, the keys of authority that have been given to us are in the action of binding and loosening. So a lot of people misunderstand what it means to walk in this authority. Now, some people say, well, only my pastor walks in authority or only this. No, every believer has been given this authority. So it's up to us to understand what it means. Now, according to uh, sorry, Galatians 3.13, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. It is written, cursed is every man that hangs on a tree. Now, a lot of misunderstanding is that a lot of people will say, hey, Jesus did it all on the cross. It is finished. That's correct. He dealt with the issue of the curse of sin upon mankind. But Jesus took the curse of sin of death. But it is up to us as an individual to exercise our authority against the enemy. He has given us all authority to bind and loosen upon the earth. But that doesn't stop Satan from fighting back. You see, he knows his time is short and his evil nature is such that even though he knows he has lost, he still tries to do as much damage as possible. And I mean, he knows he can't have our souls, but he will stop at nothing to destroy our lives and especially wants to ruin our Christian witness to a lost world. So it's so important. The church has a lack of understanding. A church has a lack of knowledge, but it is very important for us to understand when he gives us that authority, when he says it's finished at the cross, we now need to exercise that authority he has given to us. Because a lot of people say, well, you know, if you're a born again Christian, you can't have a demonic attack against your life. And that's a lie because right. as you're, as I'm a missionary, I travel a lot, you know, as, as we were just discussing before, you're from Mexico. I've mm-hmm. been to Mexico. So I, you deal with, very real s- spiritual situations in the different places you go to. Yes. And unless you understand your authority, you can actually be defeated within this spiritual battle. So it's good to have an understanding. Jesus has done it all at the cross. But then you must also walk in that finished authority uh, in your daily life. So in other words, God can't do what he's authorized us to do. That's correct. He's given us the authority. You know, our prayers is what makes God move. So when we pray, God moves. Like, so he waits for us to exercise what he has already given to us. So are you saying too that Christians are not praying daily? Uh, very much. If, if you're looking at prayer and fasting, the Bible says some only come out through prayer and fasting. If mm-hmm. to be honest with you, as I travel and I ask Christians, do you fast? It's very, very, you know, most cultures we like to have food that, you know, food is part of that, which yeah, is the good. cultural food. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, the cultural foods are good, but but the, the point is we've got to understand that food is poison to our spirit, yes. right? But fasting is food to our spirit. So we've got to understand that prayer and fasting is so vital. So even prayer. You know, some people would say prayer is just five minutes during church or you you have a prayer meeting. Now, if you go to Africa, they pray all night (laughs) until, you know, until the sun rises. So so prayer has become weakened within the church because we don't understand. And unfortunately, it's just an apathy that's crept into the church. 
But also, Pastor Robert, I have met people who are very knowledgeable about spiritual authority and um, about spiritual warfare, yet they don't exercise their knowledge. Yes, and that also can be a spiritual pride because today we we see people that are coming to, you know, that they could go to every conference there is to know about spiritual warfare. Exactly. You can become so full of knowledge that you have forgotten to exercise what you've learned. And that's why I say, you know, you know, and I'm an advocate for promoting Bible college, but unfortunately there are some things that Bible college cannot teach you until you're out there on the mission field. Exactly. It's so true. And so do you think Christians are passively confronting spiritual warfare today in this generation? Yes, I think that the sad fact is that there is a force at work in this world who does not want uh, us as believers to win these spiritual kinds of battle. And he does not want you to reflect God's love and mercy and walking in God's anointing. And he will do whatever it takes to make sure that we don't participate. And he would prefer that we become ignorant or, or completely understanding of spiritual warfare. but or prideful. We, yeah, or prideful. Um, mm-hmm. And then also become ap- apathy towards the war that we are. So now the Bible tells us, according to Matthew eleven twelve, and from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violent and the violent take it by force. So this is not meaning, because uh, we understand that our battle is not in the flesh and blood. So we right. must walk in violence in the spirit is to walk in the fullness of his love because the Bible says go and compel them to come into the kingdom of God. You can't violently make people come into the kingdom of God, but when you walk in God's love, perfect love casts out all fear. Perfect love, when we walk in that love of God, but remember walking in love is also speaking truth. So so we've got to take back what the enemy has stolen. Now, you know, Paul's constantly affirming this 1 timothy six twelve, it says fight the good fight of faith lay hold on eternal life whereunto you are also called and have professed a good profession before many witnesses so we've got to we're going to fight this spiritual battle that is before us and in keeping good conduct also with those that are witnessing our lives and don't you think too that the reality is too that the world lures us and tempts us daily and if we don't renew our minds continuously as Romans 12 2 says that we should not conform to the pattern of this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind then we will be able to test and approve what God's will is his good pleasing and perfect will don't you think that we will fall into uh, being apathetic towards spiritual warfare to just being passive to just sitting back and just taking the punches and losing the victory yes in actual fact you know if we're going if we're going to go into that question i think that this is a good one according to second corinthians 10 verses 3 to 5 it says for though we walk in the flesh we do not war after the flesh for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but they are mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, yes. casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing into captivity every thought under the obedience of Christ. So we are never told to cast out strongholds, but we mm-hmm. are told to tear them down. So to be transformed by the renewing of our mind and cast down vain imagination so this is how we deal with strongholds if the enemy builds them through carnality carnality reminding us that his of his lies then we have to do the opposite in the opposite direction and start to meditate on god's word daily so that the truth will sink into our minds and begin to change the way we think so according as you said romans 12 2 do not be conformed by this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may be proved what is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. See, a stronghold is a wrong thinking pattern. Now, demons come and attach themselves to wrong thinking. And I call that stinky thinking, meaning 
We have stinky thinking. We're listening to the lies of the enemy and we're no longer taking authority over those thoughts. Now, a lot of the problem that we're seeing today is also the way we deal with stress. A lot of people don't know how to deal with stress. So from a biological point of view, when your brain cannot handle stress, it creates a strain on your brain. So therefore, there's a lot of mental health issues today like never before. And it comes back to the stronghold of the way we're thinking. Now, let's look at it from a biological point of view. When you are stressed, it creates adrenaline to rush to your heart. When adrenaline is rushed to your heart, then your heart starts to beat at an, at an increased rate. When it starts to increase, it creates hypertension. When it creates hypertension, it also sends stress to the body organs. So a lot of people are being ill today and sick because they're not dealing with the thoughts and imaginations that are coming to them. So we've got to deal with the stinky thinking. We've got to have our minds renewed. The Bible says to have the mind of Christ. So we need to tear them down. Now, James 1, 21 says to us, therefore, lay aside all filthiness and, and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your soul. So the implanted word is the word of God. See, that's what the enemy does. He plants those negative words into our minds and it makes people stress. So if people stress, that stress turns to anxiety. A lot of people today suffer with anxiety, hypertension, which is a biological thing that the enemy uses to attack. Then it causes strain on the organs. There's a lot of people sick today. There's just like unforgiveness. People that walk in unforgiveness, we can see that a lot of sicknesses like cancer and different heart conditions are caused from unforgiveness or dealing with stress. So so the enemy is, is it, this spiritual battle is also it affects our physical body. So we're, you know, taking our thoughts captive and renewing our mind is so vital. And the more you read the word of God or spend time in his presence and worshiping, the more it is easier for us to be able to uh, walk in the peace that God has promised for each individual. Amen. This is Marina Maria from Faith City Outreach, and I am speaking to Pastor Robert Clancy from Narrow Path Ministries International in Perth, Western Australia. And we are talking about being more knowledgeable and proactive about spiritual warfare. Pastor Robert, what does victory um, in um, towards spiritual warfare look like? Okay. Well, what victory looks like is that whenever you pray, the Bible says, be anxious for nothing, but in all things through prayer with supplication, let your requests be made known to God, that the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. This is what victory looks like. Victory is that you can have a peaceful sleep. Victory is that you can have peace in your heart. The ultimate thing is the devil will attack your minds with worries and anxieties and different stresses. But it's up to you to surrender those things, to submit them back to God. The Bible says, come to me, all you who are burdened and heavy laden. He shall give you rest. The Lord wants to give people peace and rest. And we can only have that when we yield ourselves to God. Now, the Bible says, according to Romans 8, it says the Holy Spirit intercedes on our behalf. What is the purpose of the Holy Spirit uh, interceding on, on, on our behalf? It is to bring us into the perfect will of the Father. But the Holy Spirit can only bring us into the perfect will of the Father when we learn to yield ourselves to God. We've got to surrender our cares, our burdens. So where it says in Philippians 4, 6 and 7, be anxious for nothing, we've got to come to him daily. Yield those stresses, yield those uncontrollable things that you can't step out in faith to deal with. Look, surrender them to God. And then when you have peace of heart and peace of mind, then you're able to be effective and victorious in all you do. Because according to the Bible, it says in Joshua 1.8, it says, when you meditate on the word of God day and night, you will prosper 
in all your way. There is peace. He comes to bring peace. So victory is walking in the peace of Christ. That's beautiful. So answered prayers, um, having joy and peace and um, knowing God per- God's perfect will for us. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because when we're walking in peace, then we have a clear mind to make the right decisions. When you are not at peace, you know, when people go ahead of God, they tend to do that because they don't have peace. And when you don't have peace, you start to slowly not hear that still small voice of the Holy Spirit that's leading and guiding your life. Amen. What would you say or encourage Christians um, who are, let's just say, struggling with spiritual warfare? What would you say to them right now? I would say to them right now, don't give up because that is part of the enemy's plan. He will bring discouragement. He will bring offense, even someone in the church, whatever it is. That is one of the weapons that the devil gives for free, (laughs) which is Mm -hmm. offense and, um, you know, feeling discouraged. Because when you feel discouraged, you say to yourself, oh, why should I keep going? Now, even as, uh, you know, I've been a missionary for over 20 years, the enemy will try to lie to you when you become discouraged about some certain situation. Hey, everything you've done was was for nothing. And you've got to rebuke those lies and say, you know what, I rebuke that in Jesus' mighty name. And you've got to keep pressing on because the Bible says those that overcome shall receive the reward. Those that are faithful to the very end. So it's not how well we start the race, but it's how we finish the race. So you've got to learn to endure like a good soldier, keep fighting. And if you do have a particular spiritual battle that is beyond your knowledge or beyond your understanding, go and seek spiritual counsel from those that are wiser in these things. And that's why, look, uh, sister, I get up to nearly 50 to 30 emails every day with people with spiritual issues that they don't know how to handle. So it is- What do you tell them? I have to read each one. And unfortunately, it's getting so much today that I'm generally up to 3 a.m. plus every night responding to each day's demand. And and, and the thing is, God's given me the grace to do that. But my prayer is, Lord, send more laborers into the harvest. Now, we have a lot of Christians, but laborers, I'm still praying for laborers to come in for people to be awakened, to know the calling on their life, get the knowledge. You know, the, my people perish through lack of knowledge. So Gosh. a lot of it is because some pastors are a bit worried to touch on certain subjects. So therefore, they no longer uh, minister or teach about these things from behind the pulpit. Now, being a missionary for all these years, you know, uh, and, and coming from Australia, you, you deal with spiritual issues within your nation. But as soon as you start to go to other nations, you start to see, oh, hang on a minute, there's a lot of spiritual issues and you've got to be open to understanding and open to the Holy Spirit and to see through the Word of God that we are really in a spiritual battle. So for all those people that need spiritual help, uh, you know, first of all, go back to God and then ask God to send you someone that can lead you onto the right path. That's beautiful. And to know that that the... The spiritual battle or the spiritual warfare is going to be continuous. And God has given us that authority. So we have victory in Christ. Hallelujah. We just have to authorize it. But we have it. That's right. (laughs) In actual fact, (laughs) there's more authority in your little finger than the (laughs) nuclear power in America. Because he says, I have given you all authority, whatever you find on this earth shall be bound in heaven. If Christians understood that prayer can change something, we would be praying for our our leaders, would be praying for our government leaders, would be praying for 
the uh, the drug issues in suburbs, we'd be praying for whatever. We would understand our spiritual authority because where two or three are gathered, he, yeah, he is, is present with them. So, so never despise prayer because one thing you could see today as I travel the nations is I see, okay, do you have a prayer meeting in your church? The first thing to go is prayer. The next thing to go is Bible study. Now, if you have a church that doesn't have prayer and Bible study, then how are you supposed to be able to deal with the spiritual onslaught that is coming against your congregation? And what happens is we turn to alternative methods. And unfortunately today, we have people that have one foot in the kingdom of God and also looking elsewhere because they, do, they don't see this God moving. Mm-hmm. Right. So we have to choose. We have to win where we can win the battle because the victory is already in us with Christ in our lives. We just That's have right. to make a decision. That's right. Pastor Robert, would you do me the honor of um, ending this uh, program with a prayer? Um, I thank you so much for um, coming today. And um, I just pray that God continue to bless and anoint your ministry. And I would like to invite you back to give a sermon of uh, a topic of your choice. Amen. That would be much a privilege to, uh, to do so. Just to equip the people that they may be able to also fight the good fight of faith that is before them. Yes. So we could just put out our armor, full armor, day and night, wear it and be ready to lift up the sword of the spirit and speak out God's word. The battle continues, but we are assured victory in Christ. Amen to that. So Heavenly Father, I thank you for each person that is listening to this broadcast right now. I thank you, Lord, that you've given us all authority. I thank you right now in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray there are people that are struggling with certain issues right now. And Lord, that you want to visit them at their direst need right now. Lord, I thank you. You said, come unto me, all you who are burdened and heavy laden, and you shall give them rest. Lord, I pray that as each person yields themselves to the Holy Spirit, yields themselves to in your perfect will, that, Lord, you would remove those cares, those burdens, that, that physical and also that spiritual oppression that is hanging around their lives right now. Lord, I also pray for divine healing for those that are going through sicknesses. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that we know that Jesus went around healing all that were sick and oppressed of the devil. Heavenly Father, we release that anointing, that healing anointing to come upon their lives right now in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, I also pray for those that are oppressed. Lord, whatever that yoke is upon their shoulders, Lord, let it be broken today in the name of Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this broadcast also. I thank you for our dear precious sister. Lord, that you would bless this ministry. Lord, that this broadcast would go out further and deeper and wider than ever before. Lord, I pray for those that are also listening beyond the United States, those that are coming from other nations, Lord, that you would also touch them today, fill them with your Holy Spirit, fill them with your power, fill them with the authority that they may walk also in the finished work of cross and understand the authority that they have in God's word, which is living and sharper than a two-edged sword. Lord, I thank you for each person today. Release your anointing, release your glory upon them today. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Hallelujah. Shalom. Shalom. Amen. We have run out of time, but we will return next Sunday with another guest the Lord has brought to Faith City Outreach. Psalm 117, praise the Lord, all you nations, extol him, all you peoples, for great is his love toward us, and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord.